Today we are going to consider the basic forms of communication, exactly verbal communication. In the outline to this lecture, we have the following three issues. Definition of verbal codes, the power of language in intercultural communication, uh, verbal codes and intercultural competence. The first is code switching. Code switching is the process by which individuals change from speaking one language to another during a conversation. Here, participants may, must be equally fluent in at least two languages. Intercultural communication scholars have integrated under what conditions code switching takes place and its consequences. They have learned that code switching has complex rules although it usually happens naturally without the code switchers being fully aware of why they switch um, when they do. The language spoken may affect the meanings derived by the conversation partners. For example, if two people uh, fluent in both English and Spanish are having a conversation in Spanish, a third person joins them who can only speak English. The conversation, rather naturally, switches to English. No one states here, OK, now let's talk in English. The change happens naturally. Now let's assume the speakers do not know the third language who joins them, but they know his name is Jesus Martinez. They could continue speaking Spanish, assuming that Jesus knows the language until they perceive that he does not comprehend what they are saying. This example illustrates code switching as a desire to, uh, to accommodate another participant. Code switching occurs more fluently in countries where many people are bilingual. Code switching can be used in the opposite direction of the examples above. If the goal was to send a very different message, code switching could be used to, dis to distance oneself from other. Refusing to communicate in a shared code sends a clear message that the conversation is closed to strangers. The second is turn-taking. It, it is an important and necessary behavior in every face-to-face -face interpersonal exchange, and it is defined as the process through which the participants in the conversation decide who will take for, talk first, next, and so forth. Have you noticed how individuals in a conversation decide who will talk next? Nonverbal clues may be important, such as when an individual looks at the person who is expecting to talk next in a conversation, when two people who are talking do not share a common culture, they may misunderstand each other's subtle clues as to when each should speak. As a result, both individuals may try to talk at the same time or uh, their discourse may be interrupted by awkward silences. As a, as a consequence of these difficulties with the turn-taking, conversation, conversation partners may feel uncomfortable. For example, when a Japanese and a North American talk in English, a pause of a few seconds duration may frequently occur before the Japanese speaker responds. Self-discourse is the category which is defined by the degree to which an individual reveals personal information to another person. An individual may not want to disclose such details as sexual orientation, feelings toward another person who is, an, uh, who is a mutually friend or some items of taboo information. Imagine a university student disclosing to another individual that he or she was sexually abused by an adult as a child, or consider a gay, may, a gay man or woman who comes out of the closet. Such uh, topics are generally not considered acceptable in a casual conversation because of social taboos and sanctions. However, individuals may consciously uh, break their silence on these subjects as a political act in order to change those taboos. Research has been conducted on self-discourse. Scholars have investigated whether or not women are more likely uh, to disclose personal information about themselves than are men. Generally, 
personal and social characteristics are not related to the degree of an individual's discourse. The personal relationship between two or more individuals, however, does not affect self-disclosure with same cultural uh, intimates. Researchers found that both men and women were more disclosing of descriptive information about themselves while talking with a stranger than their spouse. The opposite was true when disclosing intimate feelings which were more likely to be disclosed to a spouse. The scholars studying communication distinguish between two dimensions of a message. The first one, the message content, or what is said, the second is the relationship or how it is said. The distinction was originally formulated by Gregory Bateson while observing monkeys playing in the San Francisco Zoo. He noticed that one monkey would nip another in a way that looked like real combat, but both monkeys understood that the nip was just in play. Bateson concluded that the bite message must have been preceded by another signal that established a playful relationship between the two monkeys. He called the relationship message metacommunication, that is, communication about communication. Humans, as well as monkeys, frequently engage in metacommunication. For example, one person is laughing while he makes a very offensive statement to a close friend, who thus understands uh, from the smile that he remark that the remark is in jest. The content versus relationship dimensions of communication are different in different con- cultures. As we mentioned, collectivistic cultures put great greater emphasis upon the relationship aspect of a message. As an example, individuals in a collective culture from messages in a way. Uh, so as not to offend or make another person lose face. Less important is the clarity of the message content because relationships are considered more important. In comparison, individualistic cultures stress message content over the relationship dimension of a message. If someone's feeling get hurt by a communication message, too bad. Individuals uh, greatly feel that effect- effective communication depends on being clear and avoiding ambiguity, although in an individualistic culture there are situations when ambiguous messages are appropriate. As an example, a certain degree of ambiguity would be appropriate when an individual refers an invitation uh, for a date. Explanations such as, I'm too busy or I have to study for an exam or more acceptable than, no, I don't like it. One of the important functions of interpersonal communication is to form and maintain interpersonal relationship. A culture defines uh, the, uh, the nature of these relationships between people and their intercultural interpersonal communication. Thus, one of the most important dimensions of interpersonal relationship, especially in most Asian cultures, is face, defined as the public self-image that an individual wants to present in a particular social context. Face is particularly important for the Japanese, Chinese and other Asians and Asian Americans who share a collectivist culture. We should not forget that communication is a two-way process. For every person speaking, there is usually someone who is listening. The receiving role uh, in the communication process is just as important as the sending role, although it has received much less attention from communication scholars. Most of us are not effective listeners because we are passive instead of active listeners. One reason for our inattentiveness while listening is because humans typically speak at about 125 to 150 words per minute, while individuals can listen at a rate of 400 words uh, per minute. During our spare time as a listener, we often let our mind wander to other topics. Such uh, inattentive listening often occurs during lecture classes. 20 minutes after a lecture, listeners can remember only about half of the message content. 
one hour after the lecture, remembering drops to 40%. One day uh, later, this figure is 35%, and after two days, it is 30%. One week after the lecture, listeners can remember 27%, and after two weeks, 25%. This data reflects the ability of average individuals. The principle of listening is to listen through the words in order to detect central themes. A, a good listener dis, uh, demonstrates attentiveness, uh, does not in interrupt, and is cautious in asking questions of the speaker. A listener should control his or her emotions and avoid being distracted. Listening demonstrates caring for the speaker and the topic. Actually, active listening consists of the steps like first, hearing or exposure to the message, second, understanding when we connect the message to what we already know, third, remembering so that we do not lose the message content, four, evaluating, uh, thinking about the message and deciding whether or not it is valid. And the last, responding when uh, we encode a return message based on what we have heard and what we think of it. In your Google Classroom, for the tasks uh, on week uh, 10, you have some tasks according to the attached document. Please be ready to find and discuss the following questions. But as for this lecture, we can conclude that refusing to communi communicate uh, in a shared code sends a clear message that the conversation is close to the strangers. And cultural factors strongly determine the degree to which self-disclosure is appropriate. Cultural factors also affect each of the five uh, components of active Listening In many cultures that consider it impolite to ask a speaker questions, responding may not be valued, and to, degree, uh, to disagree would be unthinkable, like in the example of an Arabian and American businessman. When we spoke about the bilinguals, so we should think uh, in mind that bilinguals prefer to use one language over another, depending on the context and the topic.